Many thanks for keeping us company. And if you just tuned in, this is Y254 Discussion Monday, where tonight we are talking about the youth in legislative leadership. And we want to understand why are we failing? And if, if we haven't failed, what do we need to do for us to be heard and seen out there? I am joined by Neville Odhiambo. He's the Secretary General for Kenya University Students Union. At Murani Hillary at Y254 Channel is the Twitter handle to use. Welcome to the program. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How have you been? I am good. Shilari. It's an honor to have you here. It's a pleasure. All right. Now, uh, there's a summit ongoing in yes. Kisumu. Yes. And uh, on the weekend, they were speaking about the youths. And it came out clearly that the youths, or the youth rather, have not been involved in the leadership per se. And we want to understand which are some of these areas that the youth have not been involved. And towards the end of last year, and actually even now as we speak, there is a deep bit going on whether we should have the referendum or not and then my first question would be what's the position of the youth in the constitutional review debate that is ongoing oh, thank you very much Hillary. Uh, the youth the position of the youth is that the youth will only support a constitutional review that in all angles will encompass the rights the welfare and the general administration mm -hmm. that entails youthful leadership all right but so if, if it is if it is a constitutional review mm -hmm. that will not encompass the youth right. then the youths will not support it all right uh, from where you seated yes. where do you think are some of the areas where the youths have not been involved they are not there already and number one uh, is when it comes to the nomination right the nomination be it to any other government parastatals, mm -hmm. to any political parties, mm -hmm. the youth have not been involved. Mm -hmm. That is the first aspect. All right. The second aspect is when it comes to our devolution or the counties. Mm -hmm. There are specific places or specific ministries, mm -hmm. including in the Ministry of Youths, right. which we find being led by people who are not youths. Right. So we feel the youths are kind of sidelined. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now, uh, what's the state of youth inclusion in governance in Kenya, and what do you think is the perception to the majority, if not all, in terms of gender equality when it comes to job opportunities and representation like you just mentioned? Because I remember last year there was a position that was given to an elderly person because the youth are said to be corrupt. So what do you think we are corrupt? and? Uh, what is the state of the inclusion to us youth out here? Uh, the state of inclusion as it stands right now mm -hmm. is very, very gross. Very, very gross in the aspect that it is very minimal. True. We are, we are not particularly included mm -hmm. in any sort of leadership or any sort of governance, okay. be it in the county, be it in the national government. Addressing the issue of gender, uh, we are moving towards that. I believe where we were in 2013 is not exactly where we are right now. We are seeing a number of women coming up, picking up leadership positions, picking up leadership roles. One of them even including uh, my uh, chairperson of KUSO, who is Anne Mvuria, who just won the University of Nairobi uh, elections. For a very long time, the University of Nairobi has never had a female yeah. chairperson True. or president. Yeah. So we are seeing the female gender coming up. And uh, moving forward by 2022, mm. we are optimistic right. that the number will have gone high. Yeah, uh, you just mentioned Handy. Remember she was supposed to be here, but yeah. due to some commitments, she couldn't make it here. So discussion Monday, we would have had uh, Anne Mvuria, uh, the first female president of Nairobi University. All right, now, we have seen policies coming up. Every politician who comes up during the electioneering period, they say, we will support the youth, we will do this. Now, what are some of the policies gaps that have, are in place and you feel these have been undermining the youth? The youth will not be there because I see positions and most, mostly in our country as we speak, the position that most of the youth, youth will run for is for the MCA. They don't think the senator belongs to them, neither do they think the governor belongs to them. So do you think we are undermined in terms of policies? Yeah, true, yeah. 
Uh, I think the first key role that we have to do in terms of the policy mm -hmm. is amending our legislative policies right. in such a manner that even a youth as me of maybe 23 years old is allowed to run for the president of this country. Right. We have seen it happen in France. We have seen it happen in very uh, countries that, that we will never imagine that it will happen. And when, 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 you, when you're speaking of policies, are we talking about the how wealthy you should be because there's certain amount you should have if you want to run for this position? Are you speaking of what you should have before you vie for this position in terms of education because like for governors you hear of the degree but we have a person who, who can be a good leader but they are only in diploma or even in certificate. That is exactly why I'm, I'm saying Hillary we need to amend mm -hmm. our legislative acts right, so that we have policies that favor the youths. Policies that could make the youths rise from the positions of MCAs to the position of senators and governors, mm -hmm. to the position of the president, to even greater positions of international level. So I think that is the first basic thing that we need to do, right. amend our legislative acts. And in your own opinion, yes. how should we amend this? What should be done? Through uh, a referendum? It, through demonstrations? No. Uh, <laughs> or a boardroom meeting? Not really. Right. Uh, you see, moving forward, or even in the previous, mm -hmm. we have sent bills, we have petitioned the parliament to do this through our able member of parliaments, through our able senators, mm -hmm. and we are optimistic that they are doing a great job. Mm -hmm. And before 2022, mm -hmm. we will have favorable laws that allow the youths to rise. You speak of the MPs and uh, I, I see the young parliamentarians already in place. As we speak, what do you think they have done to ensure that the youth and the policies that have been undermining them or everything that has been undermining the youth from prospiring in terms of leadership has been put in place? What have they done? I wouldn't say they have done so much. They haven't done anything significant. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are pushing them hard. Mm -hmm. Because we feel they have not done anything significant. A key example will even be the University Amendment Act, mm -hmm. which until today mm -hmm. has not even been touched. All right, which my audience, I believe, would want to know what does it entail? Uh, the University Amendment Act is the famously known uh, Duale Act mm -hmm. that introduced the electoral college system of voting or governance in the universities, right. as opposed to the uh, democratic process that we used to have before. Right. Yes. And what difference will it bring on board? The difference is it will be a vote by the students for the students with the students. Right. As opposed to right now where we only have a few delegates elected by the comrades or the students, thereafter these comrades or delegates are expected to elect the student leaders who will lead for a tenure of one year. All right. And what difference do you think these people will bring on board? Because I have seen people elected to higher positions and when they get there, they forget who voted for them. And even for the youth, I've had cries from even musicians. They have people in the parliament, they expected them to help them in terms of music, but nothing has been done. What do you think these people who will be elected by the students will bring the difference? You see, uh, the first thing that even before I answer your question is that the reason as to why we do not see a significant impact mm -hmm. on the youths elected is the notion that, or the status quo that has been created right. in such a manner that if these youths get into these positions, what they first look onto is wealth creation instead of service delivery. Mm -hmm. Uh, to your other question, which was talking about... Uh, if the people will be elected, what difference will they bring after being el elected by the students? By because, the they are the same, because they are the same people who will go there, mm -hmm. and they will still go to fill their pockets before they think of you who voted for them. Difference is a personal approach between the leader <laughs> and his electorate. All right. You will not expect a leader of another constituent to bring an impact in right. your own constituency. Mm -hmm. So it is upon you 
and your electrolytes. Right. The manifesto that you had, the agenda that you had for them. Right. You will not bring water where there is already water. You will not tarmac a road where there is road. Mm -hmm. But maybe you can bring electricity where there was it. True. Yes. All right. Before we move to a different matter, who are there already who pushes our agenda? Speak of the parliament. Who gets the information out there? Who do we have for the youth? Uh, right now we have uh, uh, the Young Parliamentarians Association, mm -hmm. uh, headed by Mwishimiwa uh, Babowino and uh, Sakaja. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, so far I would say they're the ones who are giving us the information mm -hmm. or pushing our agenda. All right. Uh, in the legislative arm of government. All right. Let's speak about the Uweza Fund and Youth Fund that was put in place to ensure the youth will prosper because they have been telling us we shouldn't look too into white collar jobs. We should look uh, of how we can in innovate something and work something out of it. But now, uh, what channels, if created, do you think will help to channel or to mitigate the problems the youth have been facing when going to access these funds? Because I don't expect them, or it is in the public domain, many youth, especially people from the rural areas, they will have something. But someone who is in the suburb, someone, for an example, who has been brought up in Kibra, they don't have a land, they have nothing. But when they go there, you should go a team. As an individual, you can't be given a certain amount. How true is it out there? And if it is there, what should be done? Youth fund and ways of fund are the worst disasters that ever happened to us as youths. Why do you say so? The embezzlement that have been done on these funds mm -hmm. is worse than even the great corruptions that we hear mm -hmm. or as we read on the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Why? Because these are funds that are supposed to build us as youths. These are funds that are supposed to help us grow as youths. These are funds that are supposed to make us be to the leadership position that others have been. These are funds that are supposed to push us forward and ensure we also get into the business sector. But the embezzlement that has been happening to those funds has so far created an environment of non-confidence right. from the youths to these entities. Right. And we are asking, actually in the position of KUSO, the Kenya University Students Organization, mm -hmm. we are requesting the government and the president to look into this matter mm -hmm. and ensure we have people of decorum people who can fully represent the agenda of the youth right. in these government parastatals. All right. Now, uh, Neville, I'm speaking to Neville Odhiambo. He's the Secretary General for Kenya University Students Union. And as you can hear from him, many things need to be done to our youth out here. Now, uh, speaking of the Wazo Fund and the Youth Fund, as you have rightly put it, as we speak for now since its inception, do you think there is a good number out there that, that would point and say, actually, this fund has worked were it not for ABCD? Uh, that fund has not completely worked. And I believe the, uh, the youths outside there mm. uh, do not have total confidence in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is nothing amicable to show. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the people back in the rural or the youths back at the rural right. or back at the villages, mm -hmm. some of them have never even heard of Wazo Fund. Right. The people in the suburbs, some of them have never even heard of the National Youth Fund. Sensitization has not been done. Right. And why is sensitization not being done? So that embezzlement can be entertained. True. And therefore we believe that as youths, we do not have a stake in these funds. Right. Yes. All right. Now, what channels, if put in place, do you think they will bring affirmative and effective action to ensure there is proper use of these funds? The first, first key thing that needs to be done is to change the administration of these entities and be given to the youth if they are isn't and be given to the youths mm -hmm. it is a represent it is youth fund 
Right. Therefore, the representation has to be by the youths. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, that is the first thing. Okay. The second thing is we are moving to Vision 2030. It is only through the National Youth Fund that the digitalization has not been done. Mm -hmm. We want this fund mm -hmm. to be accessed digitally. Right. We don't have time as youths to line up and go and issue our forms to the National Youth Fund office. True. The digitalization will also reduce the number of corruptions that we are hearing concerning these funds. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, devolution. Yes. And I am looking at some of the policies in the county level. Now, how can county governments be more responsive to their youth in terms of the policies and ensure that they, um, they cater for the youth in their county? Because I'm imagining of the 47 counties in our country, if every county would take care of, speak of their 100,000 youth, we wouldn't have a problem coming back to the city or moving to another county. What do you think should be done in the counties? Uh, the first thing that should be done in the counties mm -hmm. is one, to ensure that the elite youths in the counties are given government opportunities or county opportunities. Mm -hmm. For example, the CEC for mm -hmm. youths, gender, and maybe the other welfare has to be a representation of the youth. Right. If this can be done in all counties, then I believe we can have a voice. True. We can have a voice. That voice will help us, number one, in avoiding the rural urban migration. Mm -hmm. But looking at it in a larger angle, since the inception of the devolution, we are having a significant number of youths absorbed and incorporated mm -hmm. in our counties. All right. And I believe uh, maybe it's just because of the inception, but moving forward in the years to come, mm -hmm. we are going to see a number of youths taking up leadership positions. All right. As we wind up, just uh, last month, actually early this month, there was a proposal a proposed bill by the young parliamentarians coming up with a nap because they say most of the youths do not participate uh, in the public agendas because they are not there, they, they are more into internet and that app was coming up to ensure that we will have participation now. But then how do we ensure effective youth engagement in uh, through public participation in terms of coming up with ideas and selling them to the young parliamentarians? The best way to ensure the effective participation of youth mm -hmm. in any governance issue, in any leadership roles, the first thing is the digitalization of every aspect mm -hmm. of this sensitization. Because the youths are more prone nowadays to the digital era. They, you can only find them on WhatsApp, you can only find them on Facebook, yes. you can only find them on Twitter. Yeah, because Therefore, they were saying, calling for the youth for a group meeting yes. to be had, no one will come. No one will come. No one will come. Right. Because they have also created, them themselves have created a notion or a mentality mm -hmm. that if youths are called to such forum, then they have to be given some stipends. Right. Therefore, the idea of the app is a noble cause. True. And it is an idea that we as the Kenya University Students Organization <laughs> fully support. All right. Yes. Now, as we finish, do we have a political will in supporting the youth agenda? We do not really have a political will right. in supporting the youth agenda. All right. Because the youth themselves have not yet gained the confidence to believe in their fellow youths. And how should that be put in place? That should be put in place by, number one, having the confidence in your fellow brother, mm -hmm. having the confidence in your fellow sister. Right. Number three, by ensuring that we do not have the so-called the youthful jealousy. True. In such a manner that if Hillary, as a brother, ascends to power, mm -hmm. then you feel so bitter about it that will will not be there to propel mm -hmm. 
you to support the youthful agenda. All right. Yes. I would like you to give your final recommendations. Your camera is there. If you could speak to the youth out there. To the youth out there, I, as Neville Kodiambo, the Secretary General of the Kenya University Students Organization, I believe it's time we pick up the leadership roles in this country, in our counties and in our constituencies. Let us support our fellow youths in rising to leadership positions. Let us build each other and let us build Kenya. Thank you and may God bless Kenya. All right, many thanks for coming and sharing Thank your you. comments and your opinions. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Pass my regards to your comrades out there. Coming okay. up next is why Mashariki, please stay, stay tuned and know what they have for you. Relbis and Ken Relbis and DJ Tieska will be here for you. My name is Dereva Hillary. See you on Friday. Have a good night.